Hello everyone, here I am again, this time I've got this guitar, I'll move up it slowly for you, and there we have Fender Stratocaster, so this is either a 50s remake or a 70s I'd say it was 70s. But there's one other thing with it. It's a fake. As you can see, no Fender Bridge. Noises pickups. I doubt that very much. And there you have. It's a Chinese fake Fender Stratocaster that I picked up. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Okay, I just want to pause this video for a moment just to give you some telltale signs if you're going out buying a Fender Stratocaster where you can quite easily spot if it's a fake or not. Now, I'm going to start at the top and I'll put up as many photos as I can. Now, I'm going to put up a photo of this uh, headstock and as you can see on this headstock, it's got the logo on it. Now, the logo on this is printed as far as I can see. Um, it's printed uh, definitely. I've looked around in all different lights and there's, I can't see no trace of a water slide. Even though a water slide transfer is no indication by itself that it's a fake Stratocaster because some uh, Stratocasters do have the water slide. I've seen it uh, on some new ones, normally the Relict ones, that are mimicking the uh, old vintage ones because the vintage ones did have water slide. But I wouldn't take that alone as to say it's a fake. But this one's been printed, but I don't know whether you can see in this photo, but in real life you can see that it's blurry. Now, it's only slightly blurry, but Fender would not even have a slightly blurry logo on their headstock. It wouldn't pass the quality control, and it would just be pulled. So, that's one good sign. Um, on this one, or if you move a bit further down, it's got a plastic nut. You wouldn't really have a plastic nut on a USA Strat. There would be bone. Uh, it just looks and feels cheap plastic, and if you scratch it now, you can see it's just cheap plastic. So, that would not happen on the USA Strat either. Um, now, where the truss rod hole is... There's no walnut wood there. Okay, now all USA strats, as far as I know, have a walnut, you know, whole uh, part to it, like a plug, if you like. Um, it's just the surround of it is walnut. Now, on a Mexican, they're normally plastic, but on a USA, they are walnut. Now, this has got nothing on it. The only guitars I've seen with nothing on it, and it's got a truss rod opening on the headstock instead of at the bottom of the neck, um, is a squire. So this is a definite sure sign of a giveaway that this is a fake, okay, because you can see straight away the truss rod opening uh, has no walnut on it and no plastic on it. It's just a hole, which is totally wrong for a Fender Stratocaster, um, Mexican or uh, USA. This one claims to be a USA, so it definitely wouldn't have that. Now, it's got two string trees. Most USAs have only got one. Uh, but that's not a sure tail sign again, but as I'd, I'd like to mention it because every fake I've seen has two string trees, just like the Squires do. Um, now, the frets on this were a bit um, scratchy, should I say. They wasn't terrible, but they wasn't good. I've never held a USA Strat that's got sharp frettings. And this has only got a few, but they're not like, really sharp, like they're going to cut you, but you can feel them, and you shouldn't be able to feel them. You should glide your hand, really glide. And you, you could tell just by the feel of it, it's not a USA neck. Okay, so that is easily rectified, as I will do with this one. So be careful with that one. Okay, now if we go down uh, to the body, the two sure signs of this are the switch. The selector switch there, the five-way selector switch, feels really cheap and rubbish, which is a, a, a perfect sign. Again, it's a USA Strat. They would never use a cheap uh, selector switch in it. So that's a sure sign. And the saddles on this and the bridge is all wrong. Okay, they wouldn't use them saddles. There's no Fender logos on them, but they don't always use Fender logos anymore. Um, but it's the wrong saddle. You can see they're wrong. Okay, for this uh, USA. Okay, so they're just like sure signs. But it's again, not one thing, just a collection of things. And as you can see, this has got quite a lot wrong with it. Okay, so you can definitely see this is a fake. It's a lot harder to spot the fake Mexican ones, I've found, than it is the fake USA ones. There's just too many telltale signs. Okay, so I hope this helps. Now, I picked this up for a reason. I wanted to see, one, what they sound like. 
stock. This is still stock. It's not straight from the factory. I bought it second hand. It was on the local site. But it's quite impressive looking. You know, first looks. Until you start looking at it closely. String trees are wrong. Next, definitely wrong. Trash rod shouldn't look like that. That's a plastic nut. Frets are nice though. Necks quite big for me. I think they call it the baseball necks, like a 50s neck. D shape it might be, I think they call it. A bit big for me, but it still feels all right to play. It says noiseless pickups, but they're not. It's just covers. Very cheap knobs when you look at them. Very cheap scratch plate, very cheap pickups and pickup covers. Very cheap bridge and saddles. I should think the electrics inside are very cheap. The switch feels very flimsy. Let's turn it around for you. I'm assuming that's pine, the wood. Very cheap back plate there. Back plate even. Uh, fender. No, it's not. Maple neck. I'm assuming it's a maple neck. It's quite nice. Like I say, a bit too thick for me. But it still plays away. Yeah, I don't think they're bona fide fender tuners. And there's the fake USA serial number. But, as I said, I was curious as to see how these actually sound. And this is all stock. Nothing's been changed. But we'll put it out for a test. And then we'll see. Now, I've set this up on an amp. It's a Boss Cantana Mark 1, same as I do all my videos on. And this is just recording directly to the phone. Little bit of grit, little bit of distortion. And a uh, little bit of reverb. So I'm just going to go through some settings now. This is the bridge pickup. Bad, not bad. Bridge pickup sounds okay. This is now to the middle pickup. Bit warmer. That's nice as well, a bit more warm sounding. Then we go to the neck pickup. Oh, yeah, you can hear that straight away. The difference. It's neck, almost dead. Absolutely dead that string. That one's dead, so I'd say that pole's gone. Oh, 
the poles seem to be working on these all aquaphonic right now. Well, well, well. Well, well. Absolutely dead. So there's a problem with that pickup. does nothing. That tone's working. It does absolutely nothing that tone. Volume's okay. Totally dead. So, first impressions, shy. Pickups, that one's definitely 40. Uh, these two don't sound too bad actually. The bridge pickup, as you heard, was alright, quite bitey. Uh, same as the middle one, nice and warm. This neck one is almost non existent and not working. The tone knob here doesn't work at all. This one doesn't work great. So I say they're knackered. This feels terrible, very cheap. Bridge is crap, saddles are crap. Uh, neck feels all right. Like I said, um, I thought it'd be too big for me, but it does feel really comfortable to play. Holds tune lovely, the tuners feel nice and... Uh, the frets could use just a little bit of filing. I'm going to file them down a little bit because they are a little bit sharp. But that won't take a lot of doing. But the neck's nice and glossy, nice and slidey, feels all right. Apart from those, you know, mentioned problems, that pickup, the electronics and that switch. So uh, I'm going to put it back on the bench and let's see what we can upgrade and see if we can make it sound any better. Well, here we are. It's on the bench. Have a closer look at this now. I uh, don't know if you can see that. It's joint. It's definitely a two-piece body. Probably more pieces than two. I can only see a, one join though. Uh, first impressions of this guitar. It's not great. I mean, I think obviously just the bridge saddles and the bridge is not great. Um, I've got some. I've got a Fender bridge that I can put on it with the saddles. Uh, the knobs look very cheap-ish, but does it look cheap because of them noiseless pickup covers that look really cheap? So I'm not sure about that. Uh, I've got a scratch plate and I've got a back plate. I've got another switch that I'll put in there. Um, I've got some Alkino pickups that I'll put in here. Um, they're not top of the range pickups, but they're quite middle of the road. They'll be much better than these. I think I'm going to swap them over for a start. And I've got some pots as well that I'll change. I think I'm going to have to change all the electrics in there, actually, and the pickups. I might as well. So it's going to be a bridge change, saddle change, uh, scratch plate, possibly the knobs and pickup covers. They'll have to change. I will definitely change those, actually. Uh, the next lovely, I've just got to, you know, just take a bit off them frets, which won't be a lot. So it won't be a big job. Just file them down. The nut is plastic, but I'll keep that. That's quite good, quite sufficient for what sort of guitar it is. Uh, and the tuners, I was, uh, the machine heads, I was very surprised with. Very good. They've got Fender on them. I shouldn't think for a minute they're real, but uh, they could be. 
No, they're not going to be. But they're good, whatever they are anyway. Let's flip it over so I can see how many uh, joins possibly in this guitar body. Right, looking over this guitar from the back, etc., it's multiple pieces of wood. See the different grains there? So four I've counted, probably even five. You know, it does look nice though, I must admit. The lacquer on it's lovely. Lovely smooth finish, not a mark on it. It does look lovely. It's reminiscent of the 70s uh, Stratocasters. I don't know if that's what they was trying to copy. You know, 70s ones. Even though the old 70s ones didn't get too much of a good name for themselves. <laughs> Lovely maple flamed neck there. That's nice. I mean, that all feels nice. And them, like I say, them tuners are bang on. So, I think cosmetics really and them pickups have got to be changed they're terrible to the pickups but i think as a feel of a guitar it feels lovely feels lovely to play except them pickups are terrible the bridge ain't great on it so i can change them the saddles don't say fender so that's a bit of a bummer but like i say i've got them i've got a big box of spares here see that so i'm going to use what's in the spares and see if i can get it sounding better and i'll try to go through as many of the processes as i can with you as I do them. Well, I've took all the strings off and I've done the frets. These feel much better now. Just done a little bit of filing, didn't take a lot. Now I'm going to take this off and see what the electrics are like. I took the back plate off. I'll try and there's the back plate off. Not a great bridge there, is it? Not a great trim. Cheap one, like I knew it would be. But um take this off and then we'll see what's underneath. I'll probably come back when this is off. Safe bearing you. Right, something I nearly forgot to mention, and I nearly forgot like did, is uh don't undo all the screws until you've took all the knobs off. So see these pull off, they need a rag underneath them. I've shown that on other videos, but I'll show it again. Get all these off first before you take the scratch plate off. Okay, and that make it easier just to disconnect everything from the scratch plate. Okay, but I'm changing the whole lot, so it doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, but I'll show you how to get them uh, knobs off. One second. Simplest way is to get a microfiber cloth. Slide it underneath the knob, grip it both sides and pull up. And that's one. Some are tricky, some will come off real easy. Slide it under, pull upward, and that's off. Final one, slide it under. Both sides pull up and it's off. That's all the knobs off, just unscrew these normally by hand, if not, then a pair of pliers or a socket, and that's them off. Then you just unscrew everything from the scratch plate. There you go, simple as that. Right now, once all that's unscrewed, I've unscrewed this as well because that's got to be a uh, unsoldered when I change uh, the pickups and the pots uh, so pull this up make sure you've got all the screws out this is normally under there so be careful just wobble it and they come out and then whoa there's the problem with the can you see that that's the problem there with this pickup now which way round did that go I'd say that way around. But that's what's come come off the pickup, see? Yeah, these are obviously cheap ceramic pickups, they look like. I'm gonna change the pickups anyway, but there was the problem. The magnet had slid. So only some of the pickups were actually working, some of the pole pieces. 
So, how strange is that? Anyway, I'm going to get on with changing all this because it is all very cheap inside and I'll come back when I've finished. Next to come off is this bridge and the tremolo and the saddles. Right, as you can see, I've took the scratch plate completely off. Um, I found a scratch plate that I'm going to use. And this lovely tortoise shell. I think they go nice with it. It's also, look at that, much better on the back there. See that? This come, I think I bought it ages ago for something that I never used it for. It's much better, and as well as that, came with it a back plate to match. Three ply, lovely. So that's the first bit. Um, I'm going to take this off now. I have another. Get up close. There's the fender one. It's going to go on in its place. Um, obviously got the tremolo arm to go with it and I've got some lovely Alkino 5 pickups and some uh, the vintage coloured um, pickup covers and vintage coloured knobs you know vintage yellowed you know aged so that should go nice with this I think um, but I'm going to get on with it now all I'm going to do is just unscrew this and put the other bridge in so you unscrew all these screws here before you do that, obviously you take off, loosen this here. I always set my trims flat to the body or as flat as I can get to the body. So I may put more springs in. But we'll see how it goes. But you loosen this off as much as you can. You can even take it right off if you want it. Put my hand right across there, but just keep unscrewing and then just lift out these springs. You need a bit of persuasion with a screwdriver, as this one seems to. Try not to scratch the body or dent it. Just push against the tremolo. Pliers. That's it, put it out. And hook this one. Put it out. There you go. Now you're free. The wooden crap that's coming out of this guitar. Right now you're free to just unscrew the base plate. And obviously you don't want to see that, it's boring. I'll come back when I've done it. Now all these screws are out, so all it is a case of just lift this out with all the saddles on it. And if you're really lucky, and I mean really lucky because this is a Chinese copy, this bridge will match up holes wise. And we are double lucky, it does. So all you do, if not, you'd have to unscrew all these saddles and put them on the old one. So now all you do is you screw this in. With all the old screws. Obviously, intonation and action has to be set and done from scratch. So if you're not confident on doing that, change it over and then take it into your local Luthier just to set up for you. It'd be a lot cheaper than them changing the whole tremolo for you. Anyway, I'm going to screw this back up. I'll see you in a moment. That's on there. Now this is just the reverse of the taking off process. But one thing I have done is I've changed the springs. Uh, the springs on the other one were really flimsy. There's a difference there, they're thicker, these springs, I'll really see it. 
but these string uh, springs are much thicker and stronger so I'm going to put these new ones on as you can see because it's impossible to actually it's a lot harder to get these on If they're too hard to put on, just loosen it more. But it's quite simple, just loosen these up a bit more. If it's a uh, use the right screwdriver, you'll find it. Yeah, just loosen these as much as you need to, just so these push home properly, like they've done. Last one. That's it. You can put up to five springs in there. I'll just like three. And what I'm going to do is screw it up. It's a bit awkward to. So, can you see? So the bridge goes flat to the body. Because I like mine flat. But everybody sets them up different. So it's totally up to you. I suppose I better explain why I have mine flat to the body. It's for tuning stability and the same as if I break a string. For break a string while I'm playing, especially if you're playing live, it won't throw the tuning out. Okay, you can still dive bomb, which is all I really do. Not probably not dive bomb, but I only ever push the channel arm. I never pull it. Um, I don't know whether you do. If you do, then you obviously need a floating bridge. But my bridge. I'll put it straight down to it. It's not a hard sell. I do like a bit of trim if I need to, but I only ever push. Okay, but like I said, if a string breaks, it'll stay in tune. You know, you'll just lose that string and you can meander away, especially if you're in the middle of a solo, and you can meander your way through it as best you can until you swap over guitars because always have a spare guitar. Uh, if you can't afford a road, you're going to fix it while you nag to the crowd for a little while. Okay, but there you go. That's that on and that's that flat to the body. And as I said, it's just got three springs on. You can have five if you want. I like three because it makes the tram obviously easier. Okay, so that's that done until we come to solder the earth onto there. So what I'm going to do now is get the pickups, knobs, and selection switch connected to the new scratch blade. One thing to know when you're fitting a scratch plate is before you put any hardware on, offer it up to the guitar first, especially when it's a fake, like this uh, Chinese one, as you can see it doesn't fit. So you've got to either sculpt out this part, try not to do this part, okay, because that's the bit that's on show this same. But just with a sharp standing knife, okay, just sculpt that out until it fits. Now obviously the holes won't mount up, uh, won't meet up. But you'll have to re-drill those possibly. So I'm just going to keep with a sharp knife, maybe even a Stanley knife. Just scrape that away, okay, until it fits. Right? You may have to offer it up three or four times. Just keep doing it gently. Keep putting it in position until it all fits and lays flat. Okay, now obviously you don't want to see me do that because that's boring as well. So I'll come back when it's done. Right, several hours, or what felt like several hours later. This fits and lays flat. Some of the holes match, and some don't. In fact, most of them do. And this, this has actually got extra holes in. So all we do, we screw in as much as we can, and then we're, uh, we'll re drill it. Okay, well that's the scratch plate fitted, temporarily, there to fit. All the pickups and everything else inside it and i'll come back obviously when that's done with this scratch plate obviously like i said the measurements have not lined up properly so and this plate has actually got extra holes in so all 
all you have to do is get a good power drill not on hammer and just drill a couple of pilot holes where needed Now, I've put the pickups in and soldered all the pots in and everything, but it would take me far too long to show you how I soldered everything in. Um, if you're not confident with soldering, then really don't bother, but um, just copy. You know, you can get loaded scratch plates as well, which is a good idea. Um, they all come already wired. All you'd have to wire in is the two wires onto the input jack and uh, just one wire onto the earth there which I've done already but again if you're not confident with soldering get somebody else to do it okay but now we're going to put these knobs back on I've already put this the switch knob on just pushes on now the two volume ones like I've showed you in other videos but I'll show you again if you get the, uh, the volume pots to 10 to match up with where so when you're looking down you're at 10 then just push them on again do the same with the tone knobs And just push them on. You may find that these might need a bit of crimping. That one's on. And 10 there as well. That one's on. So they're all at 10. So when they're down, they're all at 1. See? So that's them done. Now all I've got to do is put on the back plate and restring it. So I'm sure you all know how to string a guitar. So I'll come back when that's done. Well, here we are with it all finished. I'll just take you through quickly what I did to it. As you saw, if you saw all the video, new fender saddles and bridge. Got a tortoiseshell scratch plate on it now with the aged knobs and pickup covers. There are Alkino 5 pickups in there. I'll say not top of the range, but a lot better than what was in there. Um, I've changed the tremolo arm just so it's got that whole 70s vibe to it now. Which is what I think they were trying to capture with the original. But the wood does look lovely. Nice maple neck. I haven't changed any of that. Nor the nut. The nut's fine. It's plastic, but it's fine. But it looks much better, in my opinion. It looked real cheap with the uh, the white on it. Let's turn it round for you, so you can see it from the back. There's the back. Lovely tortoiseshell back plate there. Again, does it lovely? Got the neck, like I said, didn't change the neck. Them tuners are brilliant. No point changing them. It literally was just changing what was cheap and what was nasty on it. Now, I had a nightmare with this back plate. It didn't match at all. I don't know where that back plate came from, the original one they put on it. But now, where I've put this one on, you will have to take the back plate off to restring it. But as I said in the video, small price to pay for something that looks nice. Let's turn it around again. Now, it looks much better in my opinion, like I say. Much more like that American 70s Ultra they've got out. That's about £2,000. But it won't sound anything like that, but it certainly looks like it. Um, this... I did enjoy it, but it did fight me all the way. Now, the pickups in it weren't great. I mean, I don't know whether the, the bridge in the uh, middle pickup was quite good. It wasn't fantastic, but it was quite good. But that uh, neck pickup was absolutely ruined. 
and when I took it apart they were real cheap I mean real cheap so but what do you expect really but this looks much better and I'm hoping it sounds much better but there's only one way to find out let's plug it in and do a sound test Now this looks nice, as you can see. Now let's try and go through the pickups. Yeah, the neck pick, uh, the bridge pickup. Ooh. The tone's working now. straight to the middle it's already warmer Straight to the neck pickup. Already, that's better, there's no volume drop. It warms up lovely. Between's bridge and middle. an overall massive improvement I hope it comes through on the uh, the phone because like, as I say I'm only using a Boss Katana and the phone nothing fancy but I think that's a massive improvement much better I'm pleased with that well I'm gonna break it down this way the pros for this guitar when I got it was it had a lovely neck it really was nice a bit chunkier than I'm used to but it still played really nice uh the tuners were fantastic you know they're definitely not real fender but they're brilliant they feel tight they hold tune 
absolutely fine. Lovely body to it, lovely lacquer finish on the neck and the body, and it feels nice and solid, and it's like contoured nicely. And uh, overall, it's lovely to play. It did really feel comfortable to hold and play, so they're the pros for it. The cons, on the other hand, on this one, was a shame that it didn't come all working because I would like to have, you know, played this and seen what it was actually like. You know, does it stand up to a, a Squire or a Mexican or, or, or a USA one? But, you know, that's laughable, really. Um, so it was a bit of a gutter that there was faults with it. Now, there was faults with the uh, pickups. It was terrible. You know, it didn't play properly. It was dead on the two bottom strings. Uh, on the neck pickup, the electrics were bad, the tones didn't work on either of them, it was just bad, and the selector switch felt, felt terrible, I mean, I know they're cheap on Squires, but this felt awful, it was terrible, so I didn't think much of it, the bridge and the saddles, the saddle, I had the bottom E string, the top E string, should I say, kept lowering, you know, I was doing it, and then it lowered again, and it was buzzing, it was terrible, so the saddles were no good, and the bridge was just cheap metal, so that was no good either, and I did think it looked really cheap, that white pick guard, those terrible noiseless, or, you know, the pickup covers that had noiseless on them, were looking awful and cheap, it was all blurred and gold, right, I mean, it looked terrible, and the knobs were, were cheap, it's them really cheap ones you can buy from China, so, which is, obviously, it's a, you know, it's going to be like that, the logo, it's a shame it's uh, blurred, but like it is a good logo. I've seen some much worse on there, much worse on uh, some of these. But yeah, the cons were uh, bad, but I've got it, it just didn't work properly because I would like to have uh, tested it up against the Squire maybe. But like I said, the bridge and the uh, middle pickup sounded really good, really good. Add some bite to it and then it, it had some warmth to it once you added the, the, the middle pickup. So I don't think the pickups were terrible, probably as bad as what you get in a Squire, to be honest. But it's just a bit difficult to uh, size it up against any guitars, really. So with the work I had to do with it, I had to file the frets down because that was a bit sharp. That took literally 10, 15 minutes. That, that was like, it was just the odd fret that was just a bit sharp, which was a shame. It let it down. Uh, I changed the pick guard and the back plate, which was an absolute nightmare because nothing fit, nothing matched up. I mean, I, they must have old templates or just wrong templates. It was an absolute nightmare. It took me to, like, to, to trim it. it, took about three quarters of an hour. It really detailed. Every time I put it on, I found another problem somewhere. But I managed to get that done properly with perseverance, so that looked good. And I think it's a, uh, you know, it's an upgrade, definitely. It's like the uh, ultra American one. That's where I got the idea from. So I changed the pit guard and the back plate, which was another nightmare. Uh, they must have had a custom made back plate from the back there because it just, you know, anything I done it just didn't fit. It just showed the holes, so I had to cover the old holes, redrill it completely, which is a shame because now you have to take the back plate off just to change the strings, but. You know, I don't think that's a big deal because it makes it look so much better, the tortoise shell scratch plate and the back plate. So I'm glad about that. The pickups all needed to be changed. I had some Alkino 5 pickups, which was brilliant. And they had the uh, vintage um, off-coloured white pickups uh, covers, which were good. It worked really well with the uh, scratch plate, which is what I wanted. And it had um, the knobs and the electronics from that, which was like a preloaded scratch plate that I bought wasn't the one with the tortoise shell so I took it all out of the preloaded it was a lime green one uh, and it was they were really nice I mean they were fantastic like I said not top of the range I think the whole thing the whole uh, loaded scratch plate only comes to about £50 uh, with the pickups in it so not top of the range pickups certainly by any means but certainly not bottom of the range pickups either so it was a massive improvement and the selector switch I changed and uh, it's not a USA selector switch I put in there it's just a better quality one uh, that came on the loaded um, pit guard as well, which was brilliant. You know, it feels so much better. Now, I had an old Fender uh, saddles and uh, back plate, or whatever you call it, the uh, bridge, and I put that on it, and they look the part now, and they're much better. They actually stay. So the intonation stays, and uh, the uh, the action stays brilliant as well. So overall, after the work I carried out and everything, it looks absolutely a thousand times better in my eyes. It looks much better. And uh, it also plays a lot better, and it sounds wicked. It sounds brilliant now. Um, I'm not sure whether it come across on the phone properly, but it definitely sounds much, much better. And uh, I suppose the conclusion of that would be that now it would hold itself up against any Mexican Stratocaster, really. 
uh, your part of pickups wise. I mean, the, the pickup. I don't think the pickups are great in a lot of Mexican uh, Stratocasters anyway. So it would definitely stand up to a Mexican. It's much better than any Squire now, definitely. 100% that would play better than any Squire you could get. Uh, it feels better, it feels more solid now, and it plays much better. It's definitely better. Uh, a USA Strat, it don't come close. That's just ridiculous to ever think that these are ever going to be like a USA Strat. If you change the whole lot, if you put Tex-Mex pickups in it, you know, it would you know it would never come close to a USA definitely not uh, that, that's just a joke anyone that says that these can be made to play like a USA strat is mad in my eyes but then again I've not seen them all but uh, this definitely not but now this has had all this work done and it I would put it up against any Mexican strat so uh, I'm quite happy with the uh, conclusion of it I'm quite happy with the end journey as well it f like I said it did fight me all the way but I'm really happy with it and it now it does sound Absolutely fantastic.